Good morning, mathematicians. We're happy that you're here with us today uh, with At Home at APS. Um, my name is Miss Obenshain, and this morning we're going to start off with a routine called Splat. What I am going to do is on our screen up here, I'm going to show you some dots, and then we're going to talk about how many dots you see, and maybe think about if you can see them in groups instead of seeing them one by one. And then we'll cover some up and try to figure out what is missing. Oh, I can do it up here. Okay, so let's get started. Bring your eyes up to the screen, and you gotta be looking because you wanna be able to see what we're gonna have here. All right. How many blue shapes do you see? And how do you see them? You're right, there's five blue shapes. Is there any way that we um, could know how many we covered up? There were two up here, and if you remember from when you were looking at them, there were some others here, and we know there are five. What goes with two to make five? Hmm. Three, you're right. Let's look and see if you were right. <laughs> that was right. There were three shapes under there. Okay, so what can we learn from this picture? We could learn that two and three go together to make five. So we're gonna go through some different combinations just like this one um, without the little question box on there, but we'll talk through them. So I'm gonna show you right now, look at the screen. What do you see? How many dots are there? How would you know it? That's right, there's eight dots. Did anybody see any groups of dots? I see two, 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 and two, two, four, six, eight. I also could think about this looking like a four, and three more and one more, and three and one makes another four, so four and four is eight. There are different ways, so try to get a picture of that in your mind. I'm gonna cover some up now, and you're gonna try to figure out if you can think about the groups that are there, how many are missing? Hmm. So we still have the four, and we have three more, so that makes seven. So what do you think is under the splat? One, that's right, because one and seven makes eight. Let's try another one. Oh, I think this one might be kind of easy. How many dots are there? Three, that's right. Two and one is what it kind of looks like to me. They're all covered up, so how many are under there? Three of them, right, we covered everything, the two and the one. Let's try another one, are you ready? Ooh, that's a lot of dots, I wonder how many that is. Can you see any groups in that? I see a four and one more, so that's five, and three more makes eight, nine, ten. I think there's ten. What do you think? Let's see what it says. There are ten. We have to think about what we see. So I, I saw the four and one down here, or there could be like a three and a three, and two over here and one there and one there. So try to get that picture in your head. I'm going to cover some up. Ooh, what did I cover up? I think there was just one or two up in that corner. Can't remember exactly though. Let's see, what do we have? We have still the five showing and three more. So five, six, seven, eight. So this is probably nine, 10. Let's see if it is two. It was two, it was these two right here. How are you doing with this? Are you getting some of these? You ready for the next one? How many dots do you see? Hmm, I see maybe a four and a three and two more, or that could even be a four and another four. Four and four is eight and one more is nine. Let's see if that's how many dots there are. It's nine. All right, so we might have a four here and then a three and two more, or we might think about two, 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 and one more. I'm gonna cover some up. Are you ready? 
Oh, the whole middle is gone this time. Hmm, that's kind of interesting to think about. What do we have on the outside? Two, another two, and another two. Two, four, six. So this was probably seven, eight, nine. Do you remember what they looked like? Let's see. There's three under there. It was part of, I was thinking about this two and this two. It was part of that one when I, the way I looked at it. Might have been different the way you looked at it. All right, are you ready? Ooh, two and two, four. Let's see what they cover. Well, that's a pretty easy one, right? There's three showing and one more would make four. Do you agree? There it is. How many dots do you see now? I think we could think about it like two, four, six, and one more is seven. Or we could think about it as four and two and one more. Or we could just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see. It is seven. Let's cover some up. Ooh, what did I cover up? I did think about two and four and six and one more being seven. So I think there's a two and another two under there. Maybe four under there. Or we could think about this is three, four, five, six, seven. It would have to be four. Let's see what, what we get. It is. There's the two and the two or a four under there. Four and three make seven. Ready for the next one? Ooh, that's quite a few. What patterns do you see there? Any groups? What sticks out to me is a three and a three, and three and three makes how many? Six, that's right. And then there's another three here. And then one more. Or you could see this as a three, and another three, and another three. Three, six, nine, and one more is 10. So let's see, I think it might be 10. It is 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. What are we gonna cover up? Ooh, they covered a lot of them this time. How are we gonna figure out what's under there? Hmm. Well, we could Think about that there is two here. How many would we need to get to 10? We would need three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We would need eight more. I might go with that strategy this time because thinking about all those dots that are covered up is a little hard. I could also try counting backwards if I took these two dots away I could see, think about what's left. So if there's 10 altogether, and I take 10 away and I take nine away, then there has to be eight under there. And that's what I got by going the other direction too. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There were eight under there. We could also see two, four, six, eight. And I didn't even really think about those groups of two the first time that when these were visible, because the three and three showed up more to, in my mind. Let's try one more. Ooh, three, and I see another three. Even though they're not quite grouped, I see a two and a one. And so that makes six. Three and three is six. Let's see what they cover up. Hmm, I think this was a three under here, if I remember what it looked like, and maybe one more. What do you think? Is there four under there? We can try our counting strategy also. If there's two out here, we would need three, four, five, six. To make six, we would need four more. Let's check it and see. Yeah, there are four under there. Wow, that is a lot of dots up there. What do you see on that one? Can you see any groups of dots? 
again, that three and three just always comes out to my eye, but I think you could also see maybe two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You think it's ten again? Let's count by ones just to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see what we get. It's ten, all right. Okay, let's see what they cover up. Ooh, I think those splats in the middle make it hard. Just think about what was covered up. I can't remember the group, so I think I'm gonna have to do the counting strategy again this time. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six dots showing, and we have to get to 10. So there has to be seven, eight, nine, 10 under there. I think there are four more dots under there. What do you think? We could also count backwards, right? If I have 10, I take away 10, I take away nine, eight, seven, six, five. That means there has to be four under there. Let's check it and see. Yep, that's it, four. And I think that might be one of our last ones on here. We might have a couple more, but I think we'll go ahead and wrap that up for today. And next, Ms. Karnas is gonna come out and do a counting piece with you. Good morning, boys and girls. So glad to have you back with us today. All right, Let's see. So oh, this morning, um, first, if you were with me yesterday, you might remember that we built some towers out of cubes. And we thought about how we could know how many cubes would be always in the very next tower. And we thought about how we could use our counting sequence to help us know, right? So if, our, if we're looking at our three tower, we know that our next tower of four should have just one more. So we could use our counting to help us figure out how tall to build our towers. We could also think about um, that we're always counting on one more and think about those cubes. So we have our three cubes here we can see. And right next to it with our four, we can see we have three, four. Three and one more gives us four. So today we're gonna do a little more counting and we're gonna use some dinosaurs to help us. So that's gonna be pretty fun. Okay. We've got a lot of dinosaurs here. All right, so we are going to Pretend that our friend Kim was playing with dinosaurs and she has, how many do you see here? Oop, that dinosaur is off the screen. She has how many dinosaurs here? We can see four, right? One, two, three, four. And what if I added three more dinosaurs? Now, how many dinosaurs does Kim have? What do you think, boys and girls? Did you say seven? I think you're right. We can check. How did you figure out seven? Did you count one, two, three, four? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's one way to do it. Or maybe you counted four and then you just kept counting right through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's another way, right? Or maybe once we knew there were four here, you were able to count on to decide how many. Four dinosaurs here, five, six, seven. Counting on our three more dinosaurs. So we're gonna try a few more like this. Let's say that this time, Kim has five dinosaurs. Are you all in the picture, dinosaurs? Yes, you are. Kim has five dinosaurs, and then her mom gives her 
four more. How many dinosaurs do we have now all together? Hmm. What do you think? Nine? I think you're right. And we could figure it out the same way. So we might have counted from one, counted all the dinosaurs up. Or we might have said five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or you might have even noticed that I put the dinosaurs down in a pattern. So if we know there's five in this row, and there's one less than five or four in this row, so it's just, just one less than 10, which gives us nine. That's another way to think about it. Are you ready to try a trickier one? Let's see. All right, so Kim has seven dinosaurs. Are we all in the picture? We are. Seven dinosaurs, and then I'm going to do something tricky. I'm going to add some more dinosaurs. Now she has 10. Can you figure out how many dinosaurs I added? So Kim had seven dinosaurs. Now she has 10. How could we work that out? Hmm. We could count, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And how many more do I need for 10? Three more, right? Let's check and see if we, that was correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many of you used your fingers to help you to do that one? That's a good way. That's a way to do it. Some of you might have also said, hmm, seven. She had seven dinosaurs, and now she has ten. So I could say seven, eight, nine. 10, three more added. That's a trickier one. Good for you for trying it. Okay, we're gonna do a few more. So this time, Kim's got five dinosaurs, but I'm gonna hide them away from you. So Kim has five dinosaurs, and then we give her just one more. How many dinosaurs does she have all together? Did you say six? If you said six, I think you were right. Let's check. Here's our five, and one more gives us six, just like our towers from yesterday. Let's try another one like this. So what if Kim has seven dinosaurs this time? Are we all in the picture dinosaurs? Seven dinosaurs, gonna hide them away, and give Kim two more. How many would that be? Oh, my dinosaurs are upside down, goodness. We could count them from one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's our seven, and two more, eight, nine, or eight, nine. Let's check if we're right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And maybe you were able to count on because we only had to count on a few counts. So seven here, you might have said seven, eight, nine to figure out how many dinosaurs we had all together. Okay, are you ready to try another tricky one? Here we go. So here, Kim has five dinosaurs, and I'm going to add a few more. Now, Kim has seven dinosaurs. Can you figure out how many I added? We started with five, and now she has seven. So how many might be under here? Hmm. We might figure it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many did I add on? 
two more, right? Or we might say we have five under here and just be able to count six, seven, I added two. Good job, boys and girls. Okay. These could be the trickiest of all. Are you ready? Okay. So, without showing you, I'm going to tell you that Kim has four dinosaurs here and two more dinosaurs here. Do you have a way to figure out how many all together? How could we do it? We could count and use our fingers to help us, right? So we could say one, two, three, four, and how many more? And two more? Five, six, six dinosaurs. Do you think that's the answer? Might be. We could have also said four, five, six, and just counted on from there. That's another way to do it. Let's try some other tricky ones. Are you ready? Okay. This time, under my paper, I have seven. Seven dinosaurs. And I'm going to add some more. Seven dinosaurs and four more. That's a big number. Can you figure it out? What can we do? So, seven, we could count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and she has four more. But guess what? Oh, I don't have enough fingers to do that. Hmm. So seven, I could count on three more. Eight, nine, 10. So I've counted on three more. What comes after 10? What's one more than 10? 11. Let's see if that strategy worked for us. Here we go. So here is our seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Wow, we were able to figure that out even though we couldn't see what was under our cover and even though we didn't have enough fingers to help us figure it out. How many of you were able to just count on from the seven? And so you said in your brain, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That's another way to work it out. All right, boys and girls. Thank you for playing dinosaurs with me and for helping um, me to use dinosaurs to count. So I wanted to tell you that at home, we have a game for you that you can play. It's called Dinosaur Count On. Parents, if you're watching, we have a deck of, ooh, we can hardly see it. We have a deck of cards that you can use in directions on our APS online. You use dinosaur cards and a die. Turn your card over. Draw a card. Ooh, I drew two. And now I'm going to roll a die to see how many more to add on. So I have a two dinosaur card, and I'm going to add one more. And I might just know that it's two, three, or I might get dinosaurs or any other thing at all I have at home that I could count and get that many and count them. One, two, and one more is three. So this is a game that you could practice at home. And I thank you guys for playing along today. We're gonna turn it back over to Mrs. Obenshane, who I think has a read aloud for you next. That's right, we're gonna read a book now. I'm probably going to come right there, actually. Oh. <laughs> We're using Mrs. Obenshane's space. Let's take the dinosaurs. All right. The book that we are going to read this morning is called 
two ways to count to 10. It is a Liberian folktale that was retold by Ruby D, illustrated by Susan Meda, and published by Henry Holt and Company. All right, so we're gonna read this story first, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the counting that happens in it. Long, long ago, animals were not so different, one, one from another. They were different colors and shapes and sizes, just as they are today, but they lived all together in friendship and peace. The leopard was king, rich beyond telling, mighty in his power and wisdom, and all the animals respected and loved their king. Who shall I name to rule after me when I die? King Leopard said one day to his beloved daughter. I must seek out the cleverest beast in our jungle. I must find one who is wise enough to rule well. I shall make him a prince. Someday, my dear daughter, the two of you shall be the queen and the king. King Leopard was pleased with his idea, and he planned a great feast. His royal drums carried the news of the feast far and wide throughout the jungle. All the animals came as guests and they danced for three days. At last, the king told them to make a huge circle. Stepping into the center, he called his daughter to his side then he spoke in a loud voice. Listen, friends, he cried. Some, someday when I am gone, another king must rule in my place. I will choose him now from among you so that he will be ready. There was a murmur of excitement all through the crowd. I shall seek the cleverest among you, for your king must be wise. He shall be a son to me and a husband to my dear daughter, and he shall share all my riches. Shouts came from the eager guests at the king's feast. No doubt each animal hoped that the good fortune would be his. Then King Leopard held up his hunting spear. Look at this, my people, watch. He flung the spear far up into the air and caught it when it fell to earth again. With this spear, I will test you. He who would be our prince must also throw the spear toward the sky. He must send it so high that he can count to 10 before it comes down again. There was a buzz of talk among all the animals. This would not be so hard to do, they thought. One after another, they came forward to try their skill. But first, each beast danced and sang before the king and his daughter. I will be first, said the elephant, pushing all the other beasts out of the way. The elephant danced clumsily. He was very big and his body was heavy. With his trunk in the air, he trumpeted all the fine deeds he would perform if he were king. I will be king, I can do this thing, he said with his trunk. The, with his trunk, the great beast threw King Leopard's spear into the air. One, two, three, he began counting. But before the elephant had said four, the king's spear dropped to the earth. The proud beast hung his head so low that the tip of his trunk dragged on the ground. He had failed. Next came the bush ox. I will be king. I can do this thing, said the huge animal as he danced. I'll throw the spear to the sun. The bush ox picked up the spear in his mouth. With a mighty toss of his great head, he flung it far, far above his wide gray horns. One, two, three, four, the bush ox counted. But he too was slow. Before he could say five, the spear was down to the ground and he went off ashamed into the jungle. The chimpanzee was third. 
He jumped up and down, beating his hairy chest with his fists and singing of how, how much he would like to be king. The chimpanzee rose up on his hind legs and held the spear in his hand, just like a man. I will be king. I can do this thing, he said. With a twist of his long arm, he threw it up towards the sky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, he chattered as fast as he could. The animals held their breath. Surely with such a quick tongue, he would make the count. But he did not. Just as he said eight, the spear fell into his hand. Then the crowd parted and the lion stepped forward majestically into the center of the circle. The lion had always wanted to be king anyway, and now was his chance to prove that he was the finest animal in the jungle. With a fling of his mighty mane, he danced and sang of his royal intentions. I will be king, I can do this thing, he said. And as the other animals looked on in awe, the lion twirled his tail around the spear and threw it skyward with a thunderous roar. One, two, three, four, five. The spear rose higher and higher. Six, seven, eight, nine. Just as he said nine, the spear pierced the earth at his feet. The lion was furious. Off he stomped into the bushes. One by one, the other animals tried to count to 10 while the spear was still in the air. One by one, they all failed. It seems I must look elsewhere for a beast who is as clever enough to rule when I am gone, King Leopard said sadly. Let me try to throw the spear, O King, came a brave voice from the crowd and out stepped the slender ant antelope. I would like to marry your beautiful daughter. I will be king, I can do this thing. Ha 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 The other animals broke into laughter. How could the weak and puny creature possibly throw the king's spear high enough to count to 10? They didn't even think he could do it to more than one or two or three. How could he hope to succeed where all the other animals even the lion had failed. But the young antelope would not be turned aside. I wish to try, he insisted. King Leopard nodded his head. Who can say that any creature can do what any creature can do until he has tried, the king said to the crowd. The antelope may throw the spear. So the other animals moved back to give him room. When the antelope danced, King Leopard's daughter was very pleased. No one could deny that his steps were more graceful than all the other animals' steps. With a toss of his head, he flung the spear far up into the air. Before it could fall to earth, he called out five words. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I have counted to ten. King Leopard did not say how the count was to be made. The king laughed and nodded his royal head. No, I did not say how the count was to be made, he agreed. And everyone knows one can count to, to 10 by twos as well as by ones. Remember, my friends, it is not always the biggest or the strongest, but sometimes the cleverest that wins the prize. The antelope has won the contest. He will be king. Wow, very clever of the antelope, right? He found an easier way to count to 10. At the wedding feast, the king leopard gave for his daughter and the, the animals all cheered for their clever new prince. Okay, so we saw that we could count by ones to 10, right? One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then Antelope had a quicker way to count to ten, right? He counted by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 
Is there another way that an animal could have counted and gotten to 10 quickly? I wonder. What if they tried to count by threes? What would happen? Three, six, nine, 12. We wouldn't end up on 10, so they couldn't have used counting by threes. What about counting by fours? Four, eight, 12. The same thing. They would not be able to use fours and land on 10, right? We got that counting by ones or counting by twos. What if we tried counting by fives? Five, 10. Ooh, that would have even been a quicker way to count to 10 if the antelope had counted by fives. This would have worked to win the contest also, right? Any of those three ways. What if the king changed the number? What if he was trying to get them to count to 24? Do you think that counting by twos, the antelope still might have been able to win? I wonder. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Ooh, that's twice as many counts as that one. 22, 24. It would have worked. We could have counted by ones, but it would have been faster to get to 24 by counting by twos. How about one of the other counts? Would, it, would counting by fives work? It worked here. Do you think it would work there? I wonder. Let's see. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. It wouldn't work, right? We would go from 20 to 25 and we would be past 24. Counting by one of these others might work though. You could investigate that. For another kind of practice that you could do at home, working on these, um, you could try to figure out if there are other ways that antelope could have gotten to 24. You could also try um, 48 maybe, or pick any other number and try to see if you could land on that number by skip counting. You might use a hunter's chart if you have one, that could help you. But another little trick that I was gonna tell you about is if you have a calculator, calculators are kind of fun to play with sometimes, right? If you have a calculator like this, or there's often calculators on phones, so you could look at the one on your phone, or your mom or dad's phone, and if you start out putting zero and then putting a plus sign, and then you could put in whatever skip counting one you want and equals, then you can keep doing the equal sign and it will show you. So let's see if I could show you right here. So if I have put in the zero and I put in the plus sign and I do two equals, I do one, two, and it's two. If I keep hitting equals, it will skip count for me. And I could keep hitting that and see if I get to 48 counting by twos. There's my 24. If I keep going, I would get to 48. There it was. I saw 48 right before 50. So you could use a calculator and do some practicing and try to see if different skip counting patterns could get you to, to 24 or even to 48. So that's an investigation that we challenge you to try on your own at home. All right, Miss Karnas is going to do a game with us now. All right, thank you, Miss Sylvan Shane. Okay, so I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the game before um, Mrs. Ovenchain and I start playing. This game is called Arrow Card Draw. And so for this game, we're gonna practice building numbers, building numbers 
with symbols, the way we would write a number on a piece of paper, and also building numbers with bundles and sticks. And so when we do this, we have bundles. Every one of these bundles has 10 sticks in it. And we could check just to make sure, right? In case you don't believe me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. There we go. So every single bundle will have 10 sticks, just like we proved to ourselves here. Now, we're going to take arrow cards, which by the way, we have for you online so that you can play this game. So let me talk to you about arrow cards and how they work. We're gonna be drawing from our arrow cards, a yellow and a red is the colors that we have today and building numbers. So I have drawn, what number is this? Oh, can't see it too well, let's see. You know? Let's see. Or. Okay, thank you. My team is helping me. Oh, that's better. Okay. That's not better. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to grab some cards we can see a little better. All right. We're back, boys and girls, and we were talking about our arrow cards, and I wanted to make sure that you could see them. So here's a little bit, um, a little information about our arrow cards. So our arrow cards have numbers on them, and we have put them together to build other numbers. So here, what number have I drawn here, do we see? This is the number 40, right? So 40, if I wanted to build it with my bundles that we talked about, I would build with one, two, three, four tens, right? 10, 20, 30, 40. So that represents 40. We're also going to draw some ones cards to help us to build numbers that have tens and ones. So let's see what I get. Oh, I got a one. So now, what's my new number? It's 41. So here I have my four bundles of 10, 40. And to make it 41, what do I need to add? That's right, just one more stick. And now I have built 41 with my arrow cards and 41 with my bundles and sticks. Arrow cards have a couple of rules. The rules are the arrows always have to line up at the end, so we can't build it like this. We have to build it so our arrows are lined up, and each card says its own name. So what does this card say then? 40, that's right. And what does this card say? One. And if we put them together, they say 41. So now, Mrs. Obenchain is gonna help me play a game where we are going to draw arrow cards, we're going to build numbers with our cards and with our bundles and sticks. And whoever gets the biggest number gets to keep the cards for that round. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. We'll go ahead and draw at the same time and build and then we'll compare after. Okay. So go ahead and see what we get here. Mmm. <laughs> I got 80 and 9, so 89. That is a big number. What would that look like with bundles and sticks? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. I think I'm going to win. <sighs> 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87. 88, 89. That is an awfully big number, boys and girls. Look at that. I have a big pile. Let's see what Miss Karnas gets. Okay, so I drew this. What number do we have here? It says its own name, so 50 and 3. So I put them together, and the number says 53. Let's build it with bundles and sticks. 10, 20, 
30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53. Who won that round, boys and girls? I think my pile's bigger. Oh, Mrs. Obenchain. Right. So you can put those cards right here next mm -hmm. for me, right there. She I win those cards. Get those cards. Okay. Are we ready to draw again? Let's go. Hmm. I might not be so lucky this time. Okay. 40 and 1, and that makes 41. Not too, too small of a number, but 10, 20, 30, 40, 41. That's the same number you demonstrated with, isn't it? Oh, that's interesting. It is. So this time I drew this two-digit number. What number is this? 70. And then I also drew this, and I'm glad I did because I didn't talk to you about this. So what number do we have here on the blue? Zero. Zero has a special rule with the arrow cards. It says, hmm? doesn't say anything. So what's my number then? Just 70. And let's build it. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Do I need to use any single sticks for this number? I don't because I have zero ones, so I don't need any single sticks, just tens. Who won this round, boys and girls? Yep, she has more tens than I do, right? Because we even heard her say 40 and then she kept adding tens. So more tens means a bigger number. Yes, it does. Okay. All right. I'm going to get this one right here. Hmm. This might not be too bad. I got 60 and 8. So what number does that make together? 68. Count with me when I build my number. 10, One, 20, 30, 30 40, 40. 50, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68. That's, That's a pretty large number, guys. It's bigger than my last one, right? Okay. Bigger than 41. How many bundles of 10 do you have there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. So six bundles of 10 makes 60. Oh, and do you see, where does that show up on Mrs. Obenshane's number? Her six bundles of 10. It shows at the front of my, of my 60, right? That tells me how many bundles that I'm going to need to make it. Oh, and then her eight, she has. Shows me my eight single sticks, right? Excellent. So here's what Mrs. Carnish drew and Again, Ms. Ms. Carnes is getting all the cards that don't follow rules. So here's what I drew. <laughs> what number do we have here? 10. This number is 10. And then along with 10, I drew a 7. So in arrow cards, when we make teens, they kind of don't follow the rules, right? Because if we can put these together, and do we say 10, 7? Nope. No, that's not how we say that number. Those teens never follow the rules. They're so tricky. They are. So, what number is this? It's 17, right? We can think about it as a 10 and seven more ones. Let's go ahead and build that with our bundles and sticks. But when we say it, you start thinking about the seven first, right? With 68. I think about saying the 60 for 68. Mm -hmm. Teens are tricky because we have to read them the other way, right? right? We start with the seven and think, oh, 17. So that's good practice. So I'm kind of glad I drew this one, except. 17 is a much smaller number. I'm not number. gonna win this round, am I? So here's 10, right? A bundle of 10. There's my 10. And to make it 17, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 
I was not even close to Mrs. Ovenchain's number that time. So she's going to win this round. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. I'm going to get this one and this one. Okay. Hmm. What did I get? 30, that's right, and a five. So together, those numbers make 35. 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. It's not quite as big of a number as I had last time. Oh my, okay. Here's what I got. This might be a lucky round for me. That's kind of a big number, isn't it? What number is that, boys and girls? Mm -hmm. 90, right? Looking at her number, how many bundles do you think that there is going to be on that? It's a 90. It has a nine in that front number, and we've mm -hmm. talked about that, right? Mine only has three bundles because it's a 30. So how many You're bundles right. will I need? I think it'll be nine. Oh, Let's see. I think so. Let's go ahead and count out the 90 first this time. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, Phew. 80, 90. Wow. All right. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You were right. Nine bundles of 10 gives me 90. And don't forget about my ones. What number do we have here? A six. So when I put these together, they say 90. Six. So let me get those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's my 96. So I think I won that round. I think so. You look at it and you can see how much bigger her number is than mine, how much bigger 90 is than mine. And let's just close with a little tricky or a little extension question. So Mrs. Carnes has 96 here, 96. How many more do I need to get to 100? Mm. 96, let's figure it out. 97, you keep track for us. 97. 98. 98. 99. 99. 100. 100, she has to add four more to make a new bundle. Thanks for helping me to keep track sure. of it. Sure. Thank you, boys and girls, for being here with us today for At Home with APS. Um, we learned a lot of things today. We thought about combinations that make numbers up to 10. We thought about ways to count two collections and figure out how many, even when we couldn't see all of the, all of the dinosaurs. Um, we thought about different ways to make 10. And then we thought about different ways to build two-digit numbers. We built them symbolically, like in writing. And then we built them with our bundles and sticks so we could really think about how many that number mm -hmm. is. With our book, you guys could practice skip counting with different numbers, twos, threes, fours, fives. I challenge you to try on a calculator to skip count by those numbers and see if you can get to different numbers. To, you can pick the number or you can try our numbers of 24 and then 48. And then also, I think on our website, there were the cards for you to play the dinosaur counting game. And then there are arrow cards. There are arrow cards as well. And you can make your own bundles at home with popsicle sticks mm -hmm. or Q-tips or toothpicks or something you have laying around mm -hmm. at home. And if you don't have something you can make into a bundle, you could just make a little pile of 10, right? And just make yourselves little piles of 10 or use 10 pennies, mm -hmm. make a stack. So we hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Parents, if you're with us, don't forget to go to our resources at aps.edu to revisit this lesson or others and check out our resources so you can play at home. All right. Thank you for joining us uh, today with APS, um, at home with APS.